San Franciscans found a haven and new homes in the East Bay where one of the West's most colorful characters, Morak Smith of 20 Mule Team fame, had come to found the key route to provide transportation adequate to the needs of this area in which he saw such tremendous possibilities. The heart of Oakland, Latham Square, looked like this at the time. But Lake Merritt and the 12th Street Dam presented this scene of isolation. Horse cars were still plodding along when Borax Smith took over. And downtown streets were always thick with either mud or dust. This was the view at Broadway and 40th Street. And this was the waterfront. Here we have, uh, <coughs> sorry, wrong picture. The Berkeley campus presented a photo lawn appearance, despite the glamour girls in the foreground. But with a new era of transportation and the influx of people from San Francisco, development progressed in leaps and bounds until the brightest dream of Francis Marion Smith was more than realized. Transportation, along which flows the lifeblood of modern civilization, had indeed brought growth and progress. And the sunny side of the bay took its rightful place as one of the leading communities of the nation. Transportation to San Francisco was by ferry, a convivial mode of travel that, particularly in the evening, had elements of fantasy and generated a sense of adventure that even the meek could enjoy. Many a commuter dreamed secret dreams when the blown spray wet his cheeks and his soul soared to the undulation of these craft that added charm to the Bay Area. Then came the bridge one of the engineering wonders of the world. When at the opening ceremony, Governor Merriam cut the golden link and the silver chain and the cars of the official party sped across this mighty span, it symbolized another triumph for courage and enterprise, another step in the parade of progress. The bridge was built with a second level to accommodate the most modern interurban trains in operation anywhere controlled at each end of the bridge by a tower that houses the switches, relays, and circuits that make up the nerve centers of one of the most efficient train control systems in existence, with safety devices that are the product of the most modern engineering genius. From the tower window, the dispatcher can identify the trains as they enter or clear the Oakland Yard. On the NX board, the route of each train is set, and the flashing lights provide visual evidence of the progress of every train at every moment, everywhere on the bridge. Everything is automatic. Activated by a button in the tower, the gears whir in the switch mechanism, the switch is thrown, and the train speeds on its predetermined course. In the metropolitan area, the train draws its power from overhead wire through a pantograph. But on the bridge, the power is picked up from a third rail, and so a shoe, which has been folded against the side of the train, is tripped. And the pantograph lowers automatically. Inside the cab, the motorman controls the speed of his train in response to the panel, which indicates 35 miles an hour at this point. This indicator is part of an elaborate safety system worked by means of electrical impulses carried through the rails. If the motorman were to disregard the speed indicated on the panel, control of the train would be automatically taken away from him. There has never been a train collision on the bridge since they began to use it in 1939. The bell indicates a change of speed. Watch closely, and you'll see the indicator drop at 25 miles an hour. If he gets too close to the preceding train, he is automatically stopped. And that's nice to know in a fog, uh, which sometimes creeps in on the San Francisco side. Approaching the terminal, where the air is fragrant with a smell of spice and roasting coffee, the speed drops from 17 to 11 miles an hour. Besides the obvious business of collecting fares, running motor coaches, streetcars, and trains, there's a whole lot that goes on behind the scenes in a system as big as this one. Roadbeds and tracks have to be maintained, 
and hundreds of men with a variety of skills are employed throughout the year on this phase of the operation alone. There are the machine shops with their great lathes and the expert machinists who keep a transit system running. There are furnaces in which metal is heated and under the masterful guidance of men, beaten into the thousand and one things needed. This is sort of a square roundhouse. It's part of the car shop, which covers acres and employs carpenters, upholsterers, metal workers, and electricians, besides the machinists and mechanics who make a complete check of every car every 48 hours and do little jobs like screwing up the wheels. This is part of one of the garages where the motor coaches are checked every 24 hours and completely serviced every 500 miles. Washing is made easier when you have a deal like this. And you'd be surprised how dirty they get after being on the road all day, or would you? Things have to be kept looking fresh. There's a certain pride in the fact that this is one of the few locally owned, locally managed transit systems in the country. Geared to the needs and dedicated to the service of the East Bay, Key System became one of the largest single businesses in the area. Key System and the colorful progressive communities it served had come of age. And then, Pearl Harbor. I ask that the Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7th, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. The country accepted the challenge. A new tempo came into our lives, and the Great East Bay, with its unparalleled harbor and factory site, became a keystone in Uncle Sam's arsenal of democracy. Local labor, supported by the thousands who poured in from every state in the Union to help, responded with a spirit that smashed production records wide open. Many key system employees, like everyone else, were called into the armed services. And so, in an area of critical labor shortages, this company became the first in the country to train women to help in the vital task of carrying people on their everyday affairs, to and from their work, schools, and churches, in an area that suddenly acquired several hundred thousands of new population. These girls served their country in the necessary field of transportation. It took manpower to build the sinews of war and transportation to get them on the job. But the equipment that had served the needs of our community in peacetime became overburdened and sadly inadequate to the demands of war. The Richmond Shipyard Railway is a good example of the way initiative and know-how licked one of the country's naughtiest transportation problems. The road was built and run by key system for the United States Maritime Commission. But new cars, steel, rails were impossible to get. So into its building went rails resurrected from scrap heaps and old spikes salvaged and straightened. The cars had served a lifetime on the old New York elevator. But with everything on wheels being pressed into service, they carried the men who built the ships that took the stuff to the boys who finished the job. But with all the extra work, Key System couldn't neglect its regular job. Thousands of people who had been able to jump in the family car, well, you remember gas rationing? And there are two more good-looking customers. Do you know, in one war year, the motor coaches alone carried more than 71 million people. What's that? They were all in your coach. Ah, <laughs> oh, those were the days. And then there were life's little surprises. I tell you, public transportation was more important than ever. Army and Navy bases covered the area, 
and in peak months, as many as 1,078,000 men per month were moved to and from the Treasure Island Navy base alone. And these activities didn't stop with the daylight hours. A 24-hour working schedule required transportation to fit. So the tools of peace were stretched a little further to meet the needs of war and went on working through the night, serving a thriving area of homes and industries from Richmond on the north to Hayward in the east with 83 interlocking transit lines. Now we can rededicate ourselves to the greater task of building a lasting peace. We know what our job is, to serve this great area better than ever, to play our part in its growth and progress. And we shall do it to the utmost of our ability. Unfortunately, a normal ideal condition doesn't form like a beautiful cloud and settle down on us overnight. But there's time to catch up on the gossip and chewing gum back. Of course, there are still some bottlenecks and some rubbernecks. And, well, despite everything, the traffic keeps moving. But people can set their watches by the Transbay trains as they go by. get one of the most exciting rides in the world. And boy, what a view! <sighs> There's that spice and coffee smell again. One of the busiest intercity transit lines in the world safely delivers another train load of passengers to the busiest terminal in America. Well, so much for the past and the present. Now, what about tomorrow? On the drafting boards of the engineers and designers, plans are already taking shape for a fleet of motor coaches and trolley coaches that will match the future planned for this greater East Bay. Hmm, some of the boys are pretty far ahead. We're aiming at perfection and plan to give you the smoothest, swiftest, safest transportation possible. We're going to go ahead hey, and show you... Hey, Doc! Hey, hey, Doc! I'll Whoa go there, McKee. Who invited you? Come on now. Get out. Get out! Possible designs of future Transbate trains are being studied. They will be set upon by... Hey! Hey, Doc! Hey! Hey, Doc! I want to... Will you please stop interrupting? Go on. Get out before I have to use the fly swatter. Cute little cuss, isn't he? Inside, where they have the parts you sit down on, there's going to be something hey, that you won't... Hey, Doc! Hey! Hey, Doc! I want All to... right, Mac, you win. Go ahead. Folks, folks, it's going to be wonderful. We're going to have television, shower baths, floor shows, free meals, and... Uh, well, we'll watch. It's cozy, isn't it? Just a minute, McKee. Hey, 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 what's the idea? Hey, sit down. Everything's going to be wonderful, all right. But let's not exaggerate. But really, folks, 
future does look mighty bright.